Good day everyone, I'm Benjamin from AB at Ben. In this video I'll show you how I created this LED display using a very cool module called WS2818 B. So first I'm going to explain you how this little module works, then I'll explain how I soldered it and put it in my project, and I'll finish with some coding tricks. So let's talk about the LEDs. You can find this precise module as strips, as rings, screens, but more importantly, and what I used in my project, as individual pixel. That's my favorite way for two reasons. Firstly, they are more flexible, meaning you can put them and arrange them exactly the way you want them to be, and also they are way cheaper than strips or screens. But there is a big drawback you have to solder them one by one, which is a big task. In order to understand how I did this, I have to first explain how the module works. Imagine that you want to control these three LEDs individually. That's possible with this module. You'll first have to power it by connecting the ground together and the five volts pin together. It is recommended uh, for big projects to put access to the ground and to the 5 volt voltage at different places so that the long wires are not acting as resistor and so that each module is having the same voltage. Then you can connect the D-in, which is data in pin, to your controller, which can be an Arduino, which is the case with my project, or a Raspberry Pi, for instance. Then it is simply a cascade. The data in of the second LED is the data out of the first LED, and the data in of the third LED is the data out of the second. So as an example, the controller can set red, white, yellow message to the first one. The first one will light in red and send the rest of the message to the second one, which is white, yellow. The second one will pick its color and send the rest of the message to the next one, etc. Now that we know how it works, let's see how to put them in the project. First with the holes, I drilled 6 millimeter holes as the inside of the LED, the little square is 5 by 5 millimeters. And I realized with some tests that it was the best way to make them fit in it. I used this piece of paper as a guide in order to know exactly where to drill and in order to place them exactly as I wanted them to be. Sometimes when some pieces were too big, I had to use sanding paper, grain 120, to remove the excess plastic around the LED so that they could fit perfectly without touching their neighbor. Then I put some tin on each metal contact of each LED, so that's 6 per LED. You have to be very careful while doing so, because you have to put enough tin so that you can then solder your wire, but you don't have to put too much, otherwise it risks to merge with the one next to it and short-circuit your system. So now in order to connect one LED to another, I to take a wire and remove the plastic around, twist it and pull tin on it. I can now solder it to one of the LED by just pushing it with my iron tip into the tin I already have on my metal part. Then I can cut it and do exactly the same thing on the other side to connect it to the other LED. This process has to be repeated a lot of times. In some cases I had to keep the insulator around the wire so that it will not touch another wire and short circuit any LED. Here you can see in this example it is because there's one LED next to it that you want to avoid, but you can also see it at the end of the line to go to the next line. Every 5 to 6 LED, I made sure that every LED was working with a simple code, so with that I could make sure that everything was soldered properly and that each individual LED was also working. Here is the final result after 5 hours of work. There are 82 LEDs for the display, which means almost 500 points to solder. Before finishing this video, I would like to give you one piece of advice regarding coding, and more specifically, 
about choosing the color of your LEDs. They are commanded using RGB because in fact in each module there are three small LEDs, one red, one green, one blue. So it's normal to send your command using RGB. However, on the client side, you want to decide either to increase or decrease the brightness or to change the color, which will be more useful if you can do it with few saturation and value. So what I did in this project is that the client is deciding for a color, hue and saturation, and for the brightness, which is value. So I send via the web to my Arduino the HSV that is then converted into RGB and so it's way more flexible so you can change the color with the same brightness or just change the brightness with the same color and this is very useful to me. So that's it for this video, I hope that you liked it. If it's the case, don't hesitate to let a comment just uh, below. The next video will be about uh, this project with all the features when it's fully finished. Meanwhile, you can see all the crazy projects that I created on my blog with the link in the description below. See you next time.